Aquarists sometimes wonder what they should put on the bottom of their aquariums. Is there a benefit to having substrate that's super fine versus something more chunky? What about no substrate at all? We'll take a look at these options and you can decide which one works best for you. At Tidal Gardens, we run a bunch of separate systems, some that feature substrate and others that do not. There's a pretty big difference between them, but there isn't a one size fits all when it comes to substrate. Depending on what you're trying to accomplish with your tank, one option might make more sense than another. The large tank shown here is a bare bottom system, mostly anyway. The thing people like about a bare bottom tank is that they're inherently easier to clean because detritus collects on the bottom of the tank and can be removed easily. The problem with that is that there's really no room for neglect. A bare bottom tank must be siphoned regularly to avoid unsightly piles of detritus from forming. This particular tank only has one tang and one fox face to graze on algae. This pair poops so much it boggles the mind. If left unsiphoned for about two days, the tank will form a pile the size of a large brain coral in one corner. So is bare bottom right for you? Let's see. The first thing that comes to mind is that it's a great solution for hobbyists that want very strong flow in their aquarium, such as SPS heavy tanks. Bare bottom tanks avoid the risk of like really strong currents kicking up substrate and creating a sandstorm. The second benefit is that if you can keep up with the maintenance, it's possible to maintain a laboratory clean system with practically a mirror finish on the bottom of the tank. Aside from this aesthetic, long-term accumulation of detritus can cause older aquariums to break down as their processing capacity is exceeded. So regular removal of detritus goes a long way towards preventing this. Let's move on and talk about sand beds. These days, most substrates are ground up aragonite, which is a crystalline form of calcium carbonate. There's three major benefits to a substrate like this. First, it's aesthetically pleasing, or at least it's more natural looking than a bare bottom tank. Second, substrates are capable of biological waste processing. Microfauna such as worms and copepods grow in the sand and do wonders for nutrient control. In our bare bottom systems, we see huge accumulations of detritus that needs to be regularly taken out. In our systems with crushed coral, the substrate hides the detritus and processes the waste. We even have a system that almost never gets attention and it's flourishing. The corals are growing practically on top of one another. I would say that we haven't siphoned the gravel or anything in close to two years. That said, the capacity of the substrate isn't infinite and one day a major reboot may be necessary. Lastly, the nature of aragonite helps buffer calcium and alkalinity levels to a small degree. Over time, the substrate dissolves similar to uh, reactor media in a calcium reactor, and it releases calcium and carbonate ions back into the water. So is this substrate good for what you're trying to do? Let's see. Crushed coral, as opposed to sand, is great for aquarists that are looking for a more natural aesthetic yet want relatively strong flow in their aquariums. The weight of the crushed coral helps keep the substrate from blowing around. Second, some types of fish require a coarse substrate, such as engineer gobies and jawfish. Third, a more coarse substrate is better for snails. I've seen some snails struggle to right themselves or even move across sand that's too fine. So when would a finer substrate be preferable? I found fine substrates a good fit for low flow systems such as refugiums um, or certain tanks with heavy macroalgae growth. Due to the fineness of the sand, it actually helps keep the detritus on top of it, unlike larger grain aragonite substrates that tend to trap it inside. Fine sand is also good for sand sifting diamond gobies and wrasses that burrow at night. So to wrap things up, I hope that this video gave you some things to think about when deciding on the type of floor for your reef. There's pros and cons to each type, so which one is best really is going to come down to what you're trying to do with your system. In the comments below, let me know which you ended up choosing and why. Most importantly, why. Until next time guys, happy reefing.